get the burst damage. And I was talking to Emily Rand about it yesterday. Hold on now. With Viego locked in, we know this is a closer staple champion okay. stomper. Something like Boss, that. I think that's actually what it is. That yeah. sounds right now that you're saying that out loud. <laughs> if it's not right, you did a good job. It might not be the whole thing. <laughs> well, either way, that's the one they're going to be using. I expect to see a lot of it in pro play. Fudge and Tenacity. Straighten back a little bit here. Fudge knocks him into the turret. Takes him low. Jumps right back in. Fudge going for the solo kill. He flashes. Oh! Tenacity tries to spin. But Fudge gets the outplay and gets the first. As it was coming out. And Busio's going to be able to rotate over for the dragon as well. So, hunt go. for thieves. Yeah, the turning into a DPS champ with the ult here. Uh, right afterwards, Harold used on top side. Tower's gonna go down. That's first tower gold as well for Cloud. That Drake count, and that means that we aren't gonna be looking at an early soul win condition for Hundred Thieves. So far, Cloud Nine with a very good game plan. Utilized the first blood. Blabber went there to burn the flash uh, with the tower dive, and a lot of resources used. Now though, they want to fight him off the Herald. They're ready to go. Fudge jumps in on his own. He's gonna find the ulti on the closer, looking to bring him to the rest of the team but it's not gonna work to find a kill. It will work to take the objective, but now Blabber needs to get out of town. Pops the ulti, making sure he's able to spin away, and Cloud9 teams are going to have to have a good answer for it, or they're gonna end up suffering a whole lot. Fudge jumps into two, ready to go up against Closer and Busio. Let's see if he can find a little bit more here. A lot of damage comes out. Fudge goes in, Closer has to run, double up under pressure, and Blabber just beats him to death. Welcome back to the LCS. And C9 takes the turret in mid to go with. Now Busio falls to Fudge, and the push continues as 100 Thieves crumble in mid lane. Fudge low, has to flash, don't matter. Tenacity gets oh. Thieves on the board. <laughs> the tower. Fudge trying to defend the blue buff against Closer, but smite is smite, not really gonna happen. And Closer can walk it off. Rod of Ages. Because we're right back into the game. Drake was just taken by the side of Cloud9, so they got a two to one lead on those. Bjergsen grabbing a turret in bottom lane for 100 Thieves, very important to lower this gold difference. Lucio again, doing a good job, utilizing his ears dash to buffer away. Double is not gonna be able to buffer that one, but he will be protected by his team. And 100 Thieves gets the punish back with Zven dead. C9 are gonna try to find one in trade, and they'll take Closer down. It's Diplex into the back. He's already found Devilift, and he might be able to find Busio too. Tenacity is not looking very tenacious right now, and Berserker goes Berserk as 100 Thieves are getting cut down. Bjergsen Bjorks wants to be the hero, but C9 reduces him. With that um, as well is super, super potent. Uh, as we saw in the last one, you're know, living on slivers of HP. And I think that's the important thing about it compared to other items like Sterex, like Maw. Hold on, Devlip goes in, Flash engaged, but Berserker's got a fast enough reaction time to get away from it. Tenacity eats the arrow, and now Blabber's coming right on back, baby. Let it rip! Tenacity's gone! Hundred Thieves are on the run, and Cloud9's looking to find a little bit more. Fudge, if you want to get in! He's just playing the back side of the pit, keeping them all zoned. Bjergsen coming back around from the side here. Bjergsen's gonna be jumped on. Bjergsen's gonna be dumped on. C9! Get the man later. They'll pick up the support. And Q gonna be like, Double is gonna have to have some World Finals Varus Qs to steal this one away. Can he, he get in do range? It? Can he get in range? Diplex trying to zone him out. Now it looks like they're gonna get a shutdown here. That's a big one. Taking out the enemy mid laner. Now, can they use this? Oh! oh get it done. Fudge knocks him right back into the pit. It's low. It's stolen. Troll closer. He somehow does it again and again and again. Closer gets inside. He steals the Baron, but magnificent plays for 100 Thieves, showing why he is the one player they did keep, but still not going to be enough is Zonia. Z9, despite this Baron buff on Busio, trying to buff up the minions and defend the tower, Cloud9 still just through force. Push it down. Baron buffs the minions, but not the turrets, sadly. If you won the enemy solo and then use one of your teleports to get back to your team so you don't give anything up, that could be a possibility. But this one looks like it's going to be a Cloud9 2v1 as Diplex joins Fudge. Tenacity's trying, trying to get the better of him here in the duel, but Diplex says, nah, man, it's a team game. Puts a shuriken in his back, and now with another TP showing up, Bjergsen might find himself in a compromised spot, but he's got backup too. Closer arrives, but the Gargoyle Stone play keeps Fudge alive. He's able to outplay it. He turns right back around and gets to the safety of his team. Closer and Bjergsen both still looking for it. There's that stopwatch, and Fudge! Gargoyle and a stopwatch? Come on, actually styling on them, another one. 
C9, they've got so much of a lead now that they're just hard forcing against 100 Thieves. The reigning LCS champs going back up against the squad they beat to earn the title, and they're doing the same thing now they did back then. C9 take down the first inhibitor in bottom lane. They'll grab the second inhib turret, but with 100 Thieves just... player here. This is a utility team player build uh, from oh. him so much, though, Fudge. Fudge just leads the way. Initially, it looked like, oh no, he's face checking into four, but it's 100 Thieves who have to turn around and run now. You're gonna see Bjergsen's spell shield there from the Banshee's Veil blocking Berserker's arrow, but the rest of the team is still ready to follow it up. Diplex goes on the killing spree, Bjergsen goes down. Busio is on the run. He'll try to escape from this one, but Sven doesn't want to let him get there. Fudge still chasing. He's run over the ultimate now, so he doesn't have that maximum level damage. Blabber's unstoppable, Closer's gone. And it looks like this just might be the end of the game. Double if I may have cursed you, my friend. I said, you know he's gonna get two kills some point in this game, but Double if dead for 12 more seconds with only one kill. Busio and Tenacity will try to hold the line here with the Nexus turrets. Busio gets away to the safety of the fountain. Budget about 200 HP. Next. Looks like they've been gonna smurf their stage games as well. 100 Thieves yeah, gonna buddy. throw everything at this dragon though. Tenacity looking to come around from the side. Went for the counter strike. Now has to immediately disengage without that defensive tool available. Bjergsen coming back in. Banshee's Veil is going to eat a lot of those rockets. Bjergsen's in the middle of everybody. Zonia's drops the aggro, but where's the rest of the thieves? Bjergsen goes in. Sven goes down. Now they're Reset. fighting Munch. Now Devil's got the shutdown on Berserker and Fudge is having to get back away. A double kill back over to Blabber as they're fighting back. And Tenacity and Bjergsen try to survive. It's a 2v2. Fudge is low. Tenacity needs a little bit more damage as Blabber finds Bjergsen, but he won't be able to find it. Now they turn back on the Blabber. That quad for killing the Blabber. Blabber tries to get the Penta. The shutdown, back over to Bjergsen. You can see that one on your screen. Blabber versus Tenacity. Blabber can't win it, Tenacity gets him. Only top laners left alive. Fudge moving back forward. And the minions in the game, it's done! Hey I'm only there. Staying <laughs> I'm only staying should, I'm not committing here. Ooh, and we get an Olaf instead into the top lane here, really looking to try and bully this. Unless they want to set up a dive, there's not a whole lot more to do, but it looks like the dive might just be the call. You can see Inspired wrapping all the way around, not even coming from the Tri Brush. He wants to make sure he has this complete cutoff angle. Vulcan is down to 400 HP. He has to flash, and Stixay has to die. It's first blood to the G is just an absolute canyon. As Young is being put to the test here by JoJo, and JoJo is setting one hell of a standard. Yeah, what kind of grade do you think he's getting on that test right now? Uh, not Six a very good one. Stixay had to flash. It don't even matter, baby. Knock, knock. FBI! Yeah, they don't know if they're gonna gain much uh, power as we move on. That was it. Never mind, JoJo. JoJo swoops them back, but it's a double swoop as the stolen ulti from Young guarantees they get the kill. And that is so critically important here for the Golden Guardians mid laner as Licorice finds himself in a 1v2 against Someday and Inspired. He might be able to win the duel, but it's a team, man. The clock keeps ticking and only ticks against you. Yeah, the solo lanes right now for um, for evil geniuses are cool. Oh, never mind. oh no! Oh no! Look away! Look away! If you have a sensitive stomach, because easily able to follow it all up, it just looks almost too easy there for evil yeah. geniuses. When you also bring Sejuani with the follow-up ultimate, that you don't get to move. And JoJo just continues to pressure so heavily with the Grievous Wounds, with his Conqueror build here for the Azir, playing for the long con. Uh, in the extended fights, top side though, someday all in. Oh, they go for it, and they take Licorice down. River's gonna come in, try to swoop one up, get it back. Oh, a nice bit of CC. But River's still got the range to get the kill there. Has to use the R2. Down. Then because of his ultimate, forces the flash out of River to... Oh, nice arrow from downtown there. Gonna stop River from being able to do a whole lot against JoJo. He's still chasing. River's low, but he will not die just yet. Now Vulcan tries to fight him off. There's the stolen ulti. There's another kill. There's Golden Guardians coming to life as the curtain call opens. And FBI looking for those hits. River's staying right behind him. <laughs> now they got to be more careful. Oh, no. They were looking at the gun, but it's the bluffing Poro out of nowhere to finish it off. Young tries to escape now. Inspired wants to chase him down. Second part of the W hits. And in Fire! You yeah. missed the memo. This item is really strong. And Inspired will force the ulti out of Licorice. 
Remember, when Olaf's not hitting a target, that thing only lasts two and a half seconds now. So, unfortunately for the Golden Guardian's top laner, Ragnarok has come and gone, and now he's stuck standing there as the Jax takes his turn. Get a dragon for themselves. So while everything may be falling down around them as far as their defenses, their towers, their base, yeah. uh, at least they won't have to worry as much about dragon stacking. I think EG, though, their plan is to win the game without it. Before. Yeah, at this rate, I think the geniuses might just win it before that fourth dragon, but the Guardians reassess where they are. And evil geniuses invade the jungle. They're going to find the catch here onto Licorice, who's trying to get away. Someday's not going to get the stun there with a counter strike. The Ragnarok continues. Someday has to try to get out now as Young may look for the angle to grab him here. Second Counter-Strike comes up, and it won't matter. Nice punish. Golden Guardian take down the E again. It's up to River to do the damage. Who he'll be here to help him. River trying to flash after JoJo. Ends up being able to use the W to go back over the wall. And with that level of control, try and chop down on this lead, but it's going to be so difficult for them to deal with so many lanes, especially because they team fight changer. As Golden Guardians will start up the Drake, you're going to see Someday chasing after Licorice, looking for the 1v1. Licorice doesn't want anything to do with it. He's just going to be chased down by the Jax. I believe the scaling has occurred. Oh. Someday needs a little bit more to get him. Someday, oh. he fails it. He drops. He dies. The team fight, meanwhile, inspired is down. Golden Guardians win both fights. Oh, my goodness. He just sent it. That was a full send under tower. And Licorice turns around on their the way back into the game. And now they're utilizing some really good topside pressure for themselves. Take out all this vision around the Baron. Get some more solo tower gold for the Silas, for Young. Golden Guardians got frisky and tried to chase you down. Don't worry, I can teleport and join. So Golden Guardians just give it up. Meanwhile, taking over some... A great game. job here so far. Inspired goes to the ulti, but won't get Young. There's only one Sejuani ulti left on the map. It's only Licorice getting hit by the enchanted Crystal Arrows. The Golden Guardians are feeling all right about that. Young goes in, finds the ulti, but it's only onto Inspired. River's in the front, but he might just die here very early. It's only the clone Inspired's taking low, taking out Licorice. Taking himself straight at that enemy jungler because he knows how much AP he has and there's no MR on Sejuani. Someday he's gonna find Young off to the side now though. Has to use the Zonius, keeping himself safe for a little bit longer. Baron is down. It's claimed by the Guardians. Someday's coming in here for the counter strike and Licorice is ready to turn it right around. Someday goes golden, but he might just be a trophy. They're doing it! He goes gone! River gets them! It here. They get the teleport right back out. As you know, they end up with the Baron. They get the extra kill. Sejuani returning the favor. Chain CC on Young, but he gets away from it. Now he's got to sidestep these bullets. Nice shoot. FBI opens up. Doesn't want to deal with this Olaf, who has his third item completed with Maul Malmortius. Now Jax will complete his third item with the Zonia's Hourglass, someday recognizing the importance of being able to fight off on their terms. That's usually who's been winning these, as River's going to find JoJo. He'll walk away from it for now. River goes right back in, and he just blends him. River likely to die here, but he has the stopwatch to keep himself alive. Someday has to flash just to get away. FBI coming in over the wall, but he can't find the kill. And the enemy jungler, EG, lose one. And Golden Look Guardians on barely gets their man out. Oh, it was, it was, I would guess. Young has the stolen Sejuani ulti. He can throw it at Inspired if they want to keep him away from the pit. There comes the Ash Arrow from downtown. Sticks a patient on the cleanse. Inspired goes in. Young's ready to fight back. Curtain call still open. One last shot from FBI. Ain't gonna find much. Baron's still low. Golden Guardians have to make a call. Do you want to stay on it? Do you want to regroup? What's it gonna be? Licorice half HP. Still has the Ragnarok ready. Someday wants to look. Ain't gonna find. Oh Young my and God. River on the back side of the Baron pit. Baron at 3K. Young and River ready to fight for it if they need to. Baron throws out his tail. Just trying to mess with him a little bit. Young having a flash. He goes stasis. Baron resets. River looking to protect. Jumps right back in. Tries to find the knockup. Not gonna find the angle here just yet. There's not really an ulti to even use. Someday and Inspired looking to camp the resurrection. They go right back in. They're gonna find some damage. Someday gets young, but now he's gonna be careful. River's still ready to go. And Someday's right back into the fight as FBI kills on Rigorous. The Golden Guardians are falling, but Stixay gets the rain of arrows in the last second to try to hold on. Golden Guardians are right. And it's a triple kill of an FBI. But then the turnaround, they can't lock down Inspired this time. So they use so many ultimates, Wukong ultimate down, the Ar Varus ultimate as well as the Ash arrow used as well. Trying to get back on track. As we said, the game plan was certainly extended, but yeah. they've been able- Got the Baron on FBI. They're gonna use that to keep all these minions nice and enchanted. Let's see if they can 
stop any attempts coming out from the Golden Guardians as River goes in. He wants to keep it going. He won't be able to find the kill of the way on FBI. And now the Golden Guardians might just get punished as fire barely staying alive. Now two. Vulcan grabs the kill on Young. And they're going to try to protect everybody else getting out. But no. Licorice will die to the burn. And River has to flee. But the soldiers deny his escape. Stick saying who he the last two left alive. FBI's on the chase. A double kill back over to Jin. And Inspired does not want to leave who he alive. A little bit more damage. Not quite enough just yet. But he does not care. It's an ace for evil geniuses. And the game will end here. What a battle here in game number two between the evil geniuses and Golden Guardians. JoJo now having to laugh about it. What a game from him. Big 1-6, baby, at the fountain. That's that's how you <laughs> tilt him. I'm sure he's typing the better mid-wins in all chats to go with it as evil geniuses. What looked like a stomp turned into a war, but the outcome remained the same. One last one, just really hoping that we get to see it locked in against the Jacks. And we yes, we will. You got a pentakill last year on this champ. Yeah. I'm just saying. So, Vulcan, let me ask you this. We see all 10 uh, yep. As long as they don't have any casualties, I think they'll be happy. It slows down a lot of the snowballing for TL. I think it's very good for their comp that they're able to do that. I think. Like calm people down, remind everyone to scale or... Oh. I think so. Oh, here. Hold on. Pioshik goes for the ulti, but Pioshik is just immediately shuffled back oh, underneath the turret. Pioshik nearly dead here, trying to make that play on Vikla. You can see the Maokai ulti comes out and it catches them. <laughs> Speak up first. Big stuff. Even though there's not a lot of kills going down here, I feel like it keeps on being these small wins for FlyQuest. Yeah, Bjorn was actually quite lucky there that the, as you as you all keep it pretty even. Summit finds his way onto Impact, who calls down the ult. He's got the barrel. Just gonna stopwatch to give the ult the Ooh. extra time. Flash and shot in the back. It's an outplay from Impact. And a late okay. flash there for Summit as well. So Summit flashes down and he dies. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Impact's too clean, man. He's been doing this for too long. Team Liquid making the dive bottom lane. Should be easy money. Harry ends up getting paid for it, but that's what they had to find. They bring one back. They find their first kill of the game. Problem is, FlyQuest is already locked and loaded back here in mid. Spika soaks the calling to protect the minions to try to buy enough time for the team to take down the turret, that's and you. they will. Yeah, getting mid is so important in any game, honestly. Mid-tier 1 makes you so that you're so... They drop the blue trinket into the brush just to make sure nothing unsightly is waiting for him there. Summit's gonna turn right back around. He's going after Spika. Spika with a flash away. Pioshik with the follow. Pioshik might be able to grab the kill here. He will. He almost gets out, but he won't find it. It's a one for one with junglers. Core's nearly dead, but nearly ain't gonna do it. Prep with the flash back over the wall. He stays alive too, but now TL has to get out of town. A double killer to Spika, thanks to a sapling. He stepped on the land. Way to go. He was probably watching the end of that fight, walking away like, oh, nice, I made it out. That's good. <laughs> Demonic Embrace is getting nerf on the hot thing. My champion pool. Uh, see if I can replace her with anything. The, the void that she's going to leave. <laughs> exactly the kind of answer I was hoping for, but uh, you can see here, Spika lived just long enough to drag Pioshik back underneath the turret. Yeah, flash for flash for junglers and ult for ult, both junglers. He goes down, Impact gets him with a, uh, another Q in the back, and it's enough damage for the sapling to kill. This sapling here, you can tell, oh, there it goes, the kid's running, Gorgia J gives it a hug and is able to burst him down. Meanwhile, Prince there uh, got me. such a strong position here. You can see yeah. even kind of casually taking the dragon. Fioshik does go for the attempt on the steal here. It's, it's only 21 minutes into the game, and they're going to try to force it down. Summit's in bottom lane. He has no TP. FlyQuest can at least turn and force TL to show up. They won't even have to worry about it. They got Baron before. So not dying when you're done, man. And FlyQuest are going to pick up another turret here. That'll take them up to a 4-2. <laughs> Good luck, have fun, <laughs> walking through the minefields. Yeah, it, it, FlyQuest are also not even cold. Oh, hold on. We got Prince going in. Prince just dives Yon and blows him up. Yeah, now no Pioshik's going to try to get away. The Lulu buffing Prince as much as possible as Spika and Impact look for a kill here onto Summit as well, who flashes out of the way. No way. He gets caught by the very end of the Maokai ulti. And here's the flash, twisted advance, knocked back into the barrel, explosion. He'll burn on down with Yawn and Summit out of the picture. I don't think that Drake's going anywhere but FlyQuest hands. Yeah, I would love to hear the comms on the TL side because that one's looking a little bit doomed. <laughs> it's tough, man. It's tough after one of those. 
Prince well, he's itching for some kills and likewise just everywhere they go they can't do any wrong at this point their lead is so big just just murdering every team back in the game you're, right. you're right. down five and a half thousand take, take back, in, back in the game wait wait a second wait hold on Vickler let's see if he can outplay this one he's got a TP coming in looking to keep him alive we the go. first kill goes over Summit picks up Vickler but now Impact's ready to fight back Summit with a Counter-Strike, re-engages. He doesn't think he's got any way out, so he's ready to take someone down, but Impact gets the kill. Now Core JJ's on the run, he dies. A double kill back over to Impact. Piyosha can't do a thing as Harry and Yawn try to get away. Spica won't be able to chase any further, but FlyQuest just... Oh, the pep talk, I think yeah. at this point, you're uh, not getting back in the game. Yeah. So it's like, all right, guys, first game of the season, you know, we're getting both looking balanced. Yeah. Maokai Ultimate, you said in champs, like, and like, ah, yeah, it's so fun. It covers the whole screen uh, in the in the counter engage here, and Impact's able to pick up the double. Impact getting jumped on again. They're trying to kill this top laner, but he survives, and he survives with enough firepower to hit right on back. Piyoshik will drop two, but at least he trades one with Vikla. 4v3 on the map, favoring FlyQuest. There he goes. Prince goes I in. like that. I like that. The Vi ultimate, you know, the uh -oh. Ninja Stuns. Uh -oh. It's, it's a good Uh-oh. Maokai ulti comes out, finds two. Prince providing the oh damage my. over the wall. The Harry's field. got not a lot left. Prince is unstoppable, man. <laughs> Well, with that kill on the enemy mid laner, FlyQuest knows it is open season on the enemy base. They take down the tier three in mid. Inhibitor should drop immediately. Vikla just jumps in to zone Yon and Core JJ away. Bottom lane, that inhibitor's ripe for the taking next. They'll eliminate that and move on to Nexus turrets. First Nexus turret's already half dead. TL's got to try to defend 4v5 for the next 15 seconds. Prince providing the damage. First Nexus turret down. Team My Liquid, they need some sort of an angle. They need some sort of a way to go in. Decent attempt there from Pioshik, buffering his ulti through the Azir wall, but it won't matter. Prince kills Yon in the fountain. A double kill to the FlyQuest AD carry, and FlyQuest just stops Team Liquid here. 13,000 gold lead, 11 kills ahead. Quadra kills the rest. Can they make it in the first game? Can Prince get it? No, but Winsome should end it here. GG. FlyQuest get their first win. Far cry from what we saw in summer, which was just very much aggressive action in the early game. But because as you already mentioned with contracts on Sejuani, maybe on, there's no yeah, flash on the Varus. Yeah, he does have cleanse, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. There's four members here. They have the wraparound. Oh There's no boy. TP to answer. And you called it in the draft. Orbital Cannon from Dome Club. First blood sets up Luger for success. A double kill over to Luger, setting up Seal Joe bot lane to snowball. Of course. You don't bait too hard that you bait yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotta make sure that Dokla knows his limits in this. But so far, this oh, is already the- Oh, he's gonna be. Andre oh. is here. Oh. Do it. Hook, line, and sink that. Oh, and that's the arrow! Arrow, Mr. arrow! Clash shall prison on top of it, the orbital cannon! Luger doesn't even need that, the damage is just CLG outplaying Ding the Toss! Boom, are you kidding? Dokla's walking forward to bait the Vi directly into the path of it. That was cracked! And this is just the mark- Oh, hold up. Jensen. Oh, Dokla. And Vi's not going to solo carry a game, so really it's, it's got to be about no. Jensen, and that's why they're looking to attack him. Here comes Contracts, nails the ult. There it is, and Jensen gets a flash out. Oh. Contracts flashes to interrupt the dash, and Palafox handles up with the damage on the back. Palafox going to cash in on that one. A couple more autos. Excuse me. As, there it uh, is. Shelly gets a little bit embarrassed, but does. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we were not supposed to bring reality into this. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see it one more time. Uh, Ash Arrow from downtown here. <laughs> Contracts. You thinking about doing something dirty here? Let's see. Dokla baiting them in potentially one more time. Glacial Prison lands right on top, but Santorin has the lockdown. This time, Jensen backs up the damage, and Dingatoss find a little bright light. Swooping on in, capturing Contracts. The flash from Palafox to try and save this fight. A lot of damage from the Chaos Storm. Jensen on the run. Doesn't have flash. They're still in tow, and they get revenge back. Yeah, they're able to dodge out on that from spawn. Makes him feel a little bit foolish. Hey man, it happens. They, they were trying to force something while they have the opportunity. Oh, Rage engages, but with the way that the game has transgressed so far, yeah. 6,000 gold ahead, 7,000 uh, now for Steel. Uh, man, Woo. what a clean steal from Dope. Uh oh. Oh. Well, <laughs> this you is just had to say <laughs> something nice, Rafa. Uh, this is the Still quite a bit of time on it, so contracts. Oh, Could no way it hit. Oh, oh, it connects, and it's the Glacial Ensemble of Ultimate.
ultimates from downtown the lock. Once you actually finish the support item, you're really depending on getting you know, global objectives or kills or assists. Right. Uh, so you're going to be any good. type of like storybook kind of ending narrative. It would be the CLG one to rise above with the returning cast. And while this is not necessarily the strongest opponent that they're going to be facing in the split, this is a great way to start out. Jensen split pushing here, trying to get something back, trying to find some semblance of hope here. Uh, will grab a bounty, which is good. This is little... someone that back in 2021, he was in the Academy roster, was given a chance on EG to step in one day against TSM, had a monster time long. This is, this is someone that really needs to make his mark, not just in this game, obviously, but for the rest of the year. It's actually, you know, Jensen, shadowing here both these soul laners are, are over here something. and they're gonna look for a kill oh but nice flash from dokla escapes jensen's attempt oh to lock they're behind him down. Him now contracts over the wall glacial prison arma throws out the lamp see if he can buy time they take one out on dokla but will that save them from going down jensen cannot escape another double for luger an over ten thousand gold lead here at this point for clg they are cruising and it would take a miracle to stop them such a dominant first day impression from CLG. It was awesome. tearing up the competition, and so when they finally got their big call up for CLG in 2022 during their big rebrand, a lot of expectations didn't always hit the mark, but so far this is a strong start as CLG is just making sure that they cannot lose. The laser connects over the wall, so a good chunk on to spawn. This tower is going to be going down here pretty quick. Contract's going to tank it up so Luger can continue to auto. And they will be able to finish this on this next wave. Santorin is likely going to look for a big wrap around. Dignitas starting to run out of options. Poom fishing for an arrow. Doesn't connect, but that's okay. The pressure was felt as already the siege lays waste to the towers of Dignitas. Jensen forced to retreat. Inhibitor tower will bite it, and damn, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, they just can't even walk forward to wave there. It's so difficult with all the poke that CLG has. I think that's just such a strong draft for them here, and they're pushing it now. First and nip down. They're just going straight for the Nexus towers. They know that Dignos doesn't really have anything. Jax is still not even basing. They're trying to hope to hold on here. It's Santorin looking for a flank, but he is spotted. Yeah, boom. Great hawk shot use, already scouting out Santorin, keeping tabs on where he was. But Dignitas recognized that there's no way that they can fight a front to back angle against CLG. So they're just trying to trade turrets at this point. A teleport is coming in now just to make sure that Arma doesn't get any more tower damage. Yeah, so Arma able to grab you know quite a few towers there, get some gold back for himself. Uh, oh! Contracts is behind him. This is going to be a tough one. And now they're TPing in. He is surrounded. You got to turn and fight. Yeah. Try to find something. Yeah, Armut, you have a flash, but I don't know how creative <laughs> you can be with it. Just start bonking Luger's head. The oh. flash, but Luger predicts it as well with his, his own arcane shift. Armut is in a world of trouble, and CLG run him down once again. Yeah, the volleys. It's going to be the engage <laughs> here from Santorin. Now, boom. You can do it. Support on jungle combat. Fight until like your life depends on it. Just stall time as the rest of the base of Dignitas is starting to crumble because everyone from CLG is looking to end the game. Boom hasn't even died yet. He fought valiantly to the bitter end just so that CLG could pick up their first win of the spring split of LCS. <laughs> Really interested to see how this works out. Maple gonna be playing a rolling Talia. champion here, busting out the Talia. And I don't know if, you want, if you're a big champion Q guy, but uh, when he first came over, he was playing a lot of roamers. He was playing a lot of Talia. A lot of, um, and in some of the slow games, sometimes you even tend to get a massive spike if you can farm it up to two, 300 stacks and then cash in. So far with the advantages that TSM have. Oh. Now, Fleshy, a lot of people were having question marks about this guy because no one knew where he came from unless you were a Turkish League fan. And now he's up on the top side of the map, uh, once again, ready to make moves. They don't even need him. Revenge takes out. Then they get the Herald. MB should just leave and try to give as much as is possible to Revenge because this turret is going down. And that is going to be an enormous gold lead now for Revenge in a favorable matchup where he hasn't able to get much at all uh, from this draft. And, and they're going to be playing from a very difficult spot. Yeah, and their engages are really far few in between. Boogie doesn't have flash. He's able to walk away safely. Neo maybe looking on this side. Great calling opening. Forces Tactical to flash away. Maple looking for more damage. Blaze Olive almost goes down. Gets a flash out. 
Oh, nicely done, piercing light through the door against Talia. And if we can see that replay again, we'll see, you know, it was the early stages of it going heavily towards them. They had a free dragon to take from that position, but as soon as to play for every dragon, that could try to eliminate a lot of the, the disadvantage that we're at. Accelerate to the point where maybe you can play for Elder Dragon on top of it. If you got Elder, anything is possible, especially at that point in the game. But Immortals has had some really strong character performances in the LCS, and one of those players they're trying to develop. We'll see if they can actually catch out Tactical here. Oh, he's super low. Run! Oh, he cannot escape. Maple throws one more rock at his back. He's gonna get knocked down here. Immortals gonna do everything they can to save this turret, but I don't think it's gonna be enough off this menu wave. That is map advantage once again. Wrestle off or not he's gonna stay around though and do just that and may have him pretty close to his second item here we can see solo getting aggressive on a blaze olive looking for the fight both of them using all out here but a blaze olive he's the one that's losing the fight and even if he gets that alive you've got boogie and neo waiting to clean up the pieces but <laughs> solo doesn't need it he gets the solo kill eventually cut them off no pulling no tidal wave we've already shown solo's got all out coming up in a bit, but a blaze all finds the mid laner, but he gets taken out by Neo. Now Morals have to fight in a four on five situation down numbers. The dragon has been around. And look at Maple looking to cut them off. A beautiful flank from the side, and Maple finds the flank angle. Mortals losing out on Kenvi. No one can potentially steal the dragon away with a 50 50 spite out of this, but TSM don't even care about the dragon. They want to look for more kills. Oh, we can see it one more time. It's the initial TP in. Revenge comes in. Has to actually drop the parry immediately. Damn. Once again, eyes on Neo. You, you can even tell that Immortals have been trying to get this guy, but no sums having been burned either. Now Revenge finds himself pinned. Boogie repelling in. Looks for the cocoon. Great repost from Revenge. Blocks it out. Makes it out alive. But he's at like 40% health with no mana. Chime though getting chunked down by that Draven ult. They just want to turn on to Fleshy. Neo opens up with the culling. Gets a little bit more damage into his backhand. Ken V throws out Glacial Prison just to sum them up, but Neo doesn't even... He's heading for the base. You can see on the minimap, he's going to actually oh. head for the base. They're going to try to stop this. Can he actually get in and steal it? It's up to Ken V. Immortals, all you got to do is just stall this as long as you can. If you don't get the Baron, just give Revenge time to unlock the gates over on the other side of the map. Ken V has already fallen. A recall is coming in from Chime. And I don't think Revenge is going to be able to get that much. Gets the inhibitor tower. Is he going to chance it for the inhibitor as well? Oh, for TSM, they are looking really good. Nice sidestep there from Tactical. Avoids the seismic shove, but it's not really going to do much. How this game was going to go, they had this snowball planned in mind. It just didn't pan out that way, and now they're dealing with the repercussions of it. Absolutely, and here comes TSM. You know, looking to just bully it down this lane. Mid lane's being pushed up, but Solo's just going forward. He wants to fight. Takes no damage from the tower, <laughs> no damage from the stolen calling. He does not care at all. And just wait until he goes all out. I mean, you see it full tank and then just turns into an all damage threat. Maple cuts off any lines of retreat from Kenvi, potentially pushes him back, gets the flash out. Tidal wave just causes even more distress as TSM is laying waste to the base of Immortals. One more Nexus turret stands between them and certified victory. Immortals now have to throw everything on the line to potentially defend. But the rest of TSM looking to make their way slowly Revenge through this one. The wave. Kenvi gets caught out. Neo gets another kill for himself. And now TSM, they just have the work one by one. Revenge has potentially a flank angle, but you have to coordinate well. You have to do it on equal terms. And Immortals, they're just throwing themselves in one by one. TSM on the doorsteps of claiming their first victory of the spring split. And a strong start for them in the LCS. Nice comeback from TSM. Immortals had a huge early game lead, but it's TSM battling back.